In this video, we solve problem 14.3.040 from Larson and Edwards Calculus Early Transcendental Functions text, 7th edition. We're asked to use a double integral in polar coordinates to find the volume V of a sphere of radius A. Now, the graph isn't given to you, but you can assume that that sphere is centered at the origin and it has a radius of A. And you can use that graph to infer what all of these pieces are. Now they tell you they want eight times some double integral where theta goes from zero to pi over two. That eight indicates to me that they're using some symmetry principle here so that they're not integrating all the way around um, the xy plane. Um, because typically if we were looking at a sphere, we would be integrating from zero to two pi. So I think I'll do is I will set this up as if I were evaluating or as if I were setting up a double integral for um, the volume of a sphere radius A and polar coordinates just in general. And then I'll show how that integral is equivalent to eight times some other integral just by symmetry. So let's assume that our sphere of radius A is centered at the origin. So it might look like this. And it crosses the z axis at negative a and a. It crosses the x axis also at negative a and a. And it crosses the y axis at negative a and a. And we know that x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals a squared. So that's the equation of a sphere of radius a centered at the origin. Okay, now if I want this, the volume of this sphere in um, polar coordinates, what I need to do is I need to think of this as um, the volume between two surfaces. I want to go from the bottom surface to the top surface. So in order to find the equation of the bottom surface and the top surface, I'm going to solve this equation for z. So if I subtract x squared and y squared from both sides, I get this. And then if I want to get z by itself, I can take the square root of both sides, but you wanna make sure not to forget that plus or minus. So we've got this now. So z is plus or minus the square root of a squared minus um, the quantity x squared plus y squared if I factor out that negative. Now remember when you're in polar coordinates, that's what this says here, we're in polar coordinates, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So this actually represents two surfaces. z equals the positive square root on the top half of that sphere and z equals the bottom or z equals the negative square root on the bottom half of that sphere. So if I am trying to find the volume of this sphere, I would take the double integral over r of the top function minus the bottom function, and then you will multiply by dA. Now the top function is that positive square root, and the bottom function is the negative square root. So now we've got two of those. I'm subtracting a negative, so that means I'm adding. And now I've got this right here. And this is where r is the projection of that sphere onto the xy plane. Now, if I look at the projection onto the xy plane, what we'll see is a circle of radius a centered at the origin in the xy plane. Well, in polar coordinates, r starts at zero and goes out to a. Because remember, r equals a constant, that's a circle of radius r. So r equals zero is here, r equals one is here, r equals two is two units out, and then r equals a is a units out. And so as we go from zero out to a, we get all of those possible, um, all the concentric circles that are centered at the origin there. 
Now, in order to get the entire xy plane, theta is an angle that sweeps. It sweeps from theta equals zero all the way over to theta equals two pi. So I'm thinking of it, theta as starting over here and ending over here. So in polar coordinates, r goes from zero to a, theta goes from zero to two pi, and we've got two times the square root of a squared minus r squared, and dA is r times dr d theta. And I put the dr here because my bounds for r are on the inside, and I put the d theta out there because my bounds for theta are on the outside. Now, this is not what they have up here. They want us to have eight times some integral from zero to pi over two. You might say, why, do, why an eight? Where's that eight coming from? Well, my integrand was this because I was going from that bottom function to the top function. So I've got that right here. But the eight is coming from the fact, or in that, or excuse me, that two is coming from the fact that we're going from the bottom function to the top function. But there's an extra factor of four. Now, if you're asking yourself, where did that extra factor of four comes, came, come from, excuse me, um, it came from the fact that we decided not to integrate from zero to two pi, but instead we were asked to integrate from zero to pi over two. So we're just going to integrate in this region. And then we're gonna say, this sphere is symmetrical the volume above this piece, so that that's the volume between that bottom half of the sphere and the top half of the sphere in the first octant, is exactly the same as the volume over here and the volume over here and the volume over here. So this integral is the same as four times this integral. Instead of integrating from zero to two pi, we'll integrate from zero to pi over two. And if I factor out that two, now I've got eight times the integral from zero to pi over two of the integral from zero to a of my integrand times dr d theta. And that's what they wanted. They wanted us to find that upper bound for r and then they wanted the appropriate integrand. I already took out the two. So I have r times the square root of a squared minus r squared right there. Okay, so that's that first part of the question. Now, in order to evaluate this, well, I'm just looking at this, a is a constant, r is my variable. I'm saying to myself, how can I evaluate that integral? We're gonna work on the inside first and we're gonna work our way out. On the inside, we're supposed to integrate with respect to r first. Now, a u substitution will work very well for this because I have this a squared minus r squared under a radical. So I'll let u equal a squared minus r squared. Then d u is the derivative of that with respect to r derivative of a squared minus r squared with respect to r is negative 2r times dr. And we could, if we wanted to, multiply this by negative 4 in order to make that an 8. But I think what I'll do this time is I'll just solve for r dr. Let's divide by negative 2. So r dr turns out to be negative 1 half of du. Now let's write everything in these brackets entirely in terms of u. So we have eight times the integral from zero to pi over two of this. This square root of a squared minus r squared, I can write as something to the one half and that's something, that's our u. R dr turned out to be negative one half of du, so we can put a negative one half there and a du over here. That d theta is on the outside, that's our outermost bound, so we're good there. And now for these inner bounds, we have to change them. This tells me that r is starting at zero and ending at a. 
So I'm going to substitute r equals zero, zero and r equals a into this formula, and that's gonna give me the corresponding bounds for u. So when r equals a, we'll have a squared minus a squared. So u will equal zero when r equals a. So r equals a was our upper limit. So u equals zero will be our new upper limit. And then we'll evaluate that expression or this expression here at r equals zero. So we'll have a squared minus zero squared, which is a squared. So that goes there. And now we're ready to anti-differentiate. So I've got negative one half times eight, that's a negative four, I can pull that out. And then I just take the antiderivative of u to the one half with respect to u. So we'll add one to the exponent and divide by the new exponent, dividing by three halves is the same as multiplying by two thirds. And then we evaluate from u equals a squared to u equals zero. At u equals zero, we get zero. And then we're subtracting two thirds of a squared to the three halves power. And that can simplify a little bit. Oops. You multiply those exponents together and that's gonna give you an a cubed. So we've got a cubed times a negative four times a negative uh, two thirds, that is eight thirds times a cubed. And that's all multiplied by the integral from zero to pi over two of d theta, one d theta. Because that's a constant, I pulled that out. Well, the antiderivative of one with respect to theta is just theta. So it looks like we have this. We've got eight over three times a cubed and the antiderivative of one is theta. And we evaluate from theta equals zero to theta equals pi over two. We've got pi over two minus zero here. And two goes into eight four times and we end up with four times pi over three times a cubed. And if you've ever found, if you've ever looked at the equation of the volume of a sphere of radius r, you'll probably recognize this. It looks a little different because of the a, um, but the volume of a sphere of radius r is four thirds of pi times r cubed. Now we're just using a here instead of r because we're using r um, for polar coordinates. I hope that helps. Please let me know if there's any part of that method that didn't make sense. I know this is a little tricky, but um, it is equivalent. The volume between this surface and this surface in the first octant or is exactly the same as the volume, or it's actually the first octant and the one below it, um, is the same as the volume over here and the volume over here and the volume over here. You gotta imagine that you've got a sphere above the xy plane and, or a hemisphere above the xy plane and a hemisphere below the xy plane. If we broke that sphere into four pieces, each piece would have the same volume. That's where that four comes from. And that two came from the fact that we were subtracting the bottom function from the top function. And the bottom function and the top function had very similar forms because Z was equal to plus or minus this square root. I hope that helps. Please let me know if you have questions. <laughs>